Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 12th of August and we are going to deal with two very important topics which are in news. First is Japan's advisory for a mega quick. Now Japan has issued an advisory to its citizens that we can expect a mega quick which is going to be more than the magnitude of 8 on the Richter scale. It also has the capacity to you know cause a lot of destruction. One second uh, generate tsunami waves of up to 100 meters height and those tsunami waves can reach the shores of Japan within minutes. So this is what we need to understand why this mega quake is happening over there. What are the involvement of plate tectonics and all over there we will see. Next is ocean temperature in Great Barrier Reef hottest in the 400 years and is it impacting the Great Barrier Reef, which is the largest colony of coral reefs in the world. It is of somewhere around 2500 to 3000 kilometers in length in the northeastern part of Austria, uh, Australia. So yes, it is impacting the coral reefs, the hot temperatures, because this hot temperatures lead to coral bleaching. And uh, these coral reefs are considered to be the evergreen forests of the oceans on which the marine ecosystem depends. So. Uh, that definitely is going to be impacted. So we will study from here in this study what are the findings of the scientist, why this study is unique. We will also see this. Then we will go to the MCQs and after the MCQs, we will discuss the MCQs of yesterday. Now, coming to the first topic that is J Japan's advisory for a mega quake. So this is uh, basically this, uh, you know, uh, country Japan, which is, you know, a developed country and, you know, uh, a country which is having uh, a lot of high-end technology, a country where people are very hard work, a country which was devastated during the Second World War and stood up after that. This country has faced a lot of hardships in the past, whether those hardships are human induced, as I said in the World War II. But apart from it, a lot of natural disasters also impact this country. Earthquakes, yes. Cyclones, in that region it is known as typhoons, yes. Tsunamis, yes. Floods, yes. A volcano is there. So they, the Japanese means, they are an epitome of, I would say, resilience because they have adapted themselves to these kind of situations. They know how to, you know, fight these situations, how to overcome from them. And now, you know, and advisory has been issued by the government of a mega quake and this mega quake is going to impact this much area of Japan. We can say roughly the eastern part of Japan which is colored over here in this picture. Now why this advisory was issued? This was issued after a 7.1 magnitude earthquake. It impacted Japan on Thursday. The country's meteorological agency issued its first ever mega quake advisory. Remember after this happened, after the warning said the likelihood of strong shaking and large tsunamis is higher than normal on the Nankai Trough. Nankai Trough, this line which you are seeing is Nankai Trough. Now what is a trough? Where two plates are meeting. According to the plate tectonics theory, the entire earth is divided into multiple plates. And here in the Nankai uh, Trough, the Philippines plate and the Eurasian plates are meeting and the Philippines plate is subducting down the Eurasian plate. And due to that subduction, earthquakes happen. And since, you know, constantly the plates are moving, so a movement might have occurred which have might lead to subduction intensively and caused an earthquake. And just after that earthquake, an advisory was issued. Okay, expect another mega quake. Now, why this advisory was issued after this? Earthquake happened, we will see. But before that, let us see what is a mega quake. A mega quake is a term used to describe an earthquake of exceptional destructive power, typically with a magnitude of 8 or greater. This is on the Richter scale, the most widely used scale for measuring the, I would say, intensity of earthquakes. These seismic events are capable of causing widespread devastation. Widespread devastation can be caused by such kind of earthquakes. They can cause structural damages, tsunamis and even loss of life. Key characteristics of mega quake. Magnitude exceeds 8 on the Richter scale. Destructive power can cause catastrophic damage over a large area. Tsunami potential 
often triggers massive and destructive waves. So, tsunami generally is triggered when an earthquake of above 7 on the Richter scale is experienced. Uh, it generally, not always, but yes, here we are talking about earthquake above 8 on the Richter scale. So, definitely more chances of tsunami will be there and this is what you know, the advisory also said. Now, Nankai Trough, we should study about that as well, about the Nankai Trough. It is an underwater subduction zone. Subduction zone means there are two plates, you know, multiple plates are there, in, the entire earth is divided into multiple plates as per the plate tectonics theory. Now, the two plates over here, one is the Philippines plate and one is the Eurasian plate. Now, when they collide with each other, the softer plate subducts and the tougher plate or the harder plates remain intact. Now, in this case, the Philippines plate is a softer plate which subducts and the Eurasian plate, plate stays at it as it is. Now, this subduction zone where it subducts, this zone is called as a trough. And here we are going to talk about Nankai trough. Nankai Trough is an underwater subduction zone, nearly 900 kilometers long it is, where the Eurasian plate collides with the Philippine Sea Plate. Pushing the latter means the Philippine Sea Plate and under the former and into the Earth's mantle. This accumulates tectonic stress which leads to earthquakes. And these earthquakes are of high magnitude. So here we can see this is the Philippine Plate. This is moving this way. This is the Eurasian Plate which stays like this and since this is the softer plate, this subducts, this goes down and it goes down towards the earth's magnet. So, this is how it is. Now, has Nankai Trough produced mega quakes earlier or is it the first time? So, it is simple that since the movements have keep on happening since the earth's formation has been there, so there might definitely be some times in the past where earthquakes due to the subduction along the Nankai Trough have happened. Now, the trough has produced large earthquakes roughly every 100 to 150 years, according to a 2023 study. High probability of successive occurrences of Nankai Megathrust earthquakes published in journal Nature. So, thing is successive occurrence. These tremors usually come in pairs. That is why after a 7.1 magnitude earthquake was experienced by Japan, the authorities issued that you can expect another earthquake and that is going to be a mega quake because generally the second earthquake which is coming in pairs is more destructive or more intense than the previous one. This has been experienced in Japan. The tremors usually come in pairs with the second often rupturing in the subsequent two years. So, in the subsequent two years, the second comes. The most recent twin earthquakes took place in 1944 and 1946. The thing is 2024 should we wait till 2026? Well, it cannot be said anything because, you know, we cannot predict earthquakes. That is something which is a shortcoming. I'll talk about prediction, but before that, let us talk about the possible impact of the mega quake which is going to occur over there in any time because, you know, since we cannot predict exactly when it will happen. But, so let's see. Such a mega quake could send tremors to areas from central Shinzuka about 150 kilometers south of Tokyo to southwestern Miyazaki. So, Shinzuka is over here. This is Shinzuka. And Miyazaki is over here. This is Miyazaki. So, from here till here, definitely it will be impacted because the Nankai Trough is somewhere here. Tsunami waves up to 98 feet may reach Japan's Pacific coast within minutes. A 2013 government report found that a major Nankai Trough earthquake could impact an area that covers about a third of Japan and where about half of country's population lives. So, a third of Japan and half of country's population can be impacted by such earthquakes. Economic damage, $1.50 trillion. It is not million, it is not billion, but it is trillion. And, you know, we cannot attribute this to global warming also. There is no such, I would say, explicit connection. This is solely, purely plate tectonics. Can earthquakes be predicted? Now, see, as the advisory said that it can happen anytime, but it, it happens generally because earthquakes are twin earthquakes over there. 
which the earthquakes are coming due to non-kite rock. So we cannot predict an accurate prediction of earthquake needs a precursory signal from within the earth indicating that this quake is going to happen. And from within the earth, a lot of signals keep on coming because plate tectonics is happening. The plates are moving. But when that movement leads to high subduction or high intensity, we cannot predict that. That is why we cannot predict earthquakes. So the signal must also occur only before large earthquakes so that it does not indicate every small movement because it the movement is happening over there beneath the earth. So a system will be like, it will be predicting earthquakes now and then, but that is not prediction. So when high intensity movement happens or movement which leads to, I would say, more shaking of the earth, they cannot be predicted because movements keep on happening. If we install a sensor over there, so that sensor will be picking up all the movements. But which movement can lead to more shaking of the earth? It is you no know, left to be discovered. So that is why you know there is no equipment to find such precursors. Then how did Japan predict it? See, Thursday's advisory by Japan's meteorological agency was just a warning, not a prediction. Warning and an advisory to its citizens that twin earthquakes come. One has come, one can come anytime in the next few years or maybe next few months or maybe next few days. So it is like this. Next is ocean temperatures in Great Barrier Reef, hottest in 400 years. First of all, Great Barrier Reef. This is the location of Great Barrier Reef, northeastern part of Australia. And somewhere around 2500 kilometers uh, is the length of this Great Barrier Reef. Some say 2300 kilometers, some say 2900 kilometers. I pick it up as 2500 to 3000 kilometers. Whatever the length may be, 23, 25, 2800, 2700, Great Barrier Reef is the largest colony of coral reefs in the world. And this largest colony of coral reefs is suffering due to high temperatures of the oceanic waters over there. And this high temperatures of oceanic water is basically the warmest in 400 years. That is the cause of concern. This has been found out in a report. And this report is unique. Why it is unique? Because it puts the effects of man-made climate change in historical context. Other studies have looked at the damage to the reef over a shorter time frame. But it has dated, it, it has scaled its study back to know hundreds of years from there it is coming to the present day time and studying the impacts on this great barrier reef over the years that is why it is unique and more authentic before proceeding into the findings and all let us understand what coral reefs are corals are marine invertebrates or animals not possessing a spine each coral is called a polyp and thousands of such polyps live together to form a colony which is Grow, uh, which is basically called as coral reefs. Corals share a symbiotic relationship with single-celled algae called zooxanthellae. Symbiotic relationship means you give something and you get something in return from the other organism. You give something to the other organism and you get in return something from the other organism that benefits both of you. What you have, that organism doesn't have, you give it to that organism. What that organism doesn't, uh, what that organism has, you don't have, he, that organism gives it to you. This is how, you know, give and take is the symbiotic relationship and corals are basically in symbiotic relationship with the algae. Take care. Now, what is the symbiotic relationship? What does the algae give? What does the coral give? We'll see. The algae provides coral with food and nutrients because algae has that capability of producing uh, food. Uh, in the presence of sunlight. The food and nutrients to corals is provided by the algae which they make through photosynthesis using the sun's light. In turn, what the corals give to the algae is a home and key nutrients for producing food. The zooxanthellae also gives corals their bright color. Zooxanthellae is this uh, algae. Take care. Australia's Great Barrier Reef is the world's largest reef system stretching across 2300 kilometers. It hosts 400 different types of corals, gives shelter to 1,500 species of fish and 4,000 types of mollusks. So, a lot of marine ecosystem is dependent upon this Great Barrier Reef. 
Now the findings in this report. Now a group of scientists at universities across Australia drilled cores into the coral. They drilled into the corals just like they drill in the trees to you know find the rings on the trees which depicts their age. So they you know drilled and analyzed the samples to measure summer ocean temperatures going back to 1618. So from there they are coming to 2024. Combined with ship and satellite data going back around 100 years, the results show ocean temperatures that were stable for hundreds of years began to rise from 1900 onwards and as a result of human influence, these temperatures began to rise from 1900 onwards. Before that, they were largely stable. From 1960 to 2024, that is the last, I would say, 80 years or so, the studies authors uh, sorry, 64 years or so, the study's authors have observed an average annual warming from January to March of 0 0.12 degree Celsius per decade. So, every decade, this oceanic temperatures has been increasing by 0 0.12 degree Celsius from this January to March period. Since 2016, the Great Barrier Reef has experienced five summers of mass coral bleaching. So, 2016 till 2024, this is eight years. And in these eight years, mass coral bleachings five times have happened that is something which is concerning and what is coral bleaching let us understand coral bleaching it happens when corals experience stress in their environment see corals are in symbiotic relationship algae that is the zooxanthellae and the polyps they are in i would say symbiotic relationship algae providing food and color to the polyps polyps providing a shelter and essential nutrients to the algae now, if there is this stress in the environment, what is stress? If the oceanic temperatures increase, if the oceanic acidity increases, if there is too much sunlight present, it happens during low tides and all, then there is stress in the environment in which corals are there. And due to this stress, they tend to break off their symbiotic relationship. It, a kind of breakup happens between the zooxanthellae and the polyps. Now, once this breakup happens, this zooxanthellae comes out and the polyp remains uncolored and that is what bleaching is because zooxanthellae was giving it the color. So, it is like this under the stressed conditions zooxanthellae or food producing algae living inside the coral polyps start producing reactive oxygen species which are not beneficial to the corals. The corals expel the color giving zooxanthellae from their polyps which exposes their pale white exoskeleton giving corals a bleached experience. Uh, or appearance that is why coral bleaching it is called as this ends the symbiotic relationship now through this image we can see healthy coral this is basically the zooxanthellae these circles which you are seeing and this is the polyp polyp can be represented from a separate i would say color this is polyp now in a stressed coral these green dots which you are seeing which is the zooxanthellae they start to come out they start to leave and finally this is what it is left you know a dejected i would say coral polyp the breakup guy over here whose color has gone pale white or i would say exoskeleton has been exposed because the color was due to the zooxanthellae the causes of coral bleaching what can be the causes of coral bleaching so multiple causes can be there change in ocean temperatures which is happening oceanic temperatures are uh, highest in the 400 years the study has found runoff and pollution that can lead to this coral bleaching runoff and pollution means rivers run off or let's suppose too many untreated waste is getting into the oceans or i would say oil spills have also happened over exposure to sunlight it is said that extreme of everything is bad here over exposure to sunlight creates stressed environments for the corals and due to those stressed environments you know this uh, i would say symbiotic relationship it breaks off leading to coral bleaching extremely low tides again extremely low tides will be there more access to sunlight will be there higher temperatures will be there it is like this now the mcqs arrange the cities of japan from north to south i know this is going to be tricky but yes it is there in the notes uh, in on the map so tokyo kyoto nagasaki hiroshima so all these famous cities are there of japan so you have to find out one two three four means tokyo is the northest kyoto is the second 
Nagasaki is the third, Hiroshima is the southernmost. So likewise, this sequence is there. You have to find out the correct one. Second, which of the following can be a reason for a mega quake? Subduction of a tectonic plate, tsunami. Only one, only two, both one and two, neither one nor two. Carefully answer this question. Reason for a mega quake. Consider the following statements and mark the correct one. Earthquakes can be predicted. Second, a mega quake is an earthquake with a magnitude of above 8 on Richter scale and has the potential of exceptional destructive power. Which of these statements is are correct? Relatively easy question that is. Third, consider the following and mark how many of the following can be the reasons for coral bleaching. Low tides, global warming, marine pollution including oil spills. Only one, only two, all of the above can be the reasons or none of the above can be the reasons for coral bleaching. Fifth, consider the following statements and mark the correct one. Coral reefs are in a symbiotic relationship with the oceans. Great Barrier Reef is the world's largest coral reef system. Carefully read this question and answer. Only one, only two, both one and two, neither one nor. Now, 10th of August, that is Saturday's MCQs, the answers to those questions. Consider the following statements and mark the correct one. First is, India is not a signatory to UN Convention on Status of Refugees, but signed the 1967 protocol. This is wrong. It has not signed the 1967 protocol, neither that UN Convention on Status of Refugees. Both India has not signed. So, this statement is wrong. India has provided refuge to Rohingya Muslims according to the 1967 protocol. No, according to its conditions, according to uh, the merit of the situation, we can say. So, neither one nor two is the correct option. Which country has the highest number of Rohingya migrants at the moment? At the moment, Cox's Bazaar in Bangladesh is having it. So, that is the correct answer. We explicitly discussed this as well. Third, consider the statements and mark the correct one. The MPC has to meet at least once in two months as per the RBI Act. No, it has to meet once in a quarter as per the RBI Act. It is meeting once in two months, but it has to meet at least once in three months. So, this is wrong. MPC is mandated to keep the repo rate in the range of 4 plus minus 2 percent. Not repo rate, but it is inflation which it has to keep. Take the repo rate to can be presently it is 6.5 percent. So, this is what we need to understand. So, this makes this particular statement also wrong. It is neither one nor two. So, do not get confused. We have to keep inflation in this rate range, not the repo rate. Consider the statements and mark how many of them are correct. How many? Monetary Policy Committee is a six member committee comprising of all the members nominated by the government. No, not all the members are nominated by the government. Only three members are nominated by the government. Three are from RBI. RBI governor is the in de facto chief of this committee. The MPC decides on policy interest rates by majority. This is true. Chairman of MPC is chosen by majority vote from among the members. No, the RBI governor is the de facto chairman of this monetary policy committee. You don't, you don't have to choose. So, only one statement is correct out of these statements. Consider the following statements and mark the correct one. If MPC fails to maintain inflation in the target range of 2 to 6 percent for one quarter. No, it is not for one quarter. It is for three successive quarters. Three quarters. Then it has to submit a report to the government. So, this statement is wrong. If during voting in MPC, there is a tie situation, then the chairman of the committee, that is the RBI governor, has the power to cast a vote or re-vote. This statement is absolutely correct. So, A, sorry, B is going to be the correct answer for this particular question. So, with this, we've come to an end of today's session. I will be seeing you tomorrow now with more such informative news pieces. Till then, you guys very well know what to do. Keep studying, keep reading, keep writing, keep watching the videos, keep attempting the questions and most importantly, keep revising. Namaste. Jai Hind.